NAD impacts the health and function of many organ systems, but it declines during aging. So how can we increase NAD? Well, one strategy involves diet, and more specifically, by including foods that contain CD38 inhibitors. So why CD38 inhibitors? CD38 increases during aging, as shown by the red line, and when considering that it's a NAD ACE, which means that it uh, degrades NAD, that's one contributing factor to why NAD levels decline during aging. So uh, CD38 inhibitors include apigenin and quercetin, and I've covered uh, them in a previous video. If you're interested in that, uh, you can click on the link in the right corner. But there are others, including lute luteolin, luteolinidin, and curomanin. So then the obvious question should be, how do these flavonoids compare against abigenin and quercetin as CD38 inhibitors? And that's what was explored in this study. So uh, what we're looking at as the metric for uh, CD8, human CD38 activity is the IC50. And the IC50 is how much of a substance is needed to inhibit CD38 in this example by 50%. So it's the half maximal inhibitory concentration. And in this case, a lower concentration would be better because that shows that you need less of a substance to inhibit half of its activity. And higher values would be worse because you need more of that substance to inhibit half of its activity. And what we can see is that the three uh, flavonoids on this list that have the lowest IC50 values for inhibiting CD38 are luteolinidin, curomanin, and luteolin at 6 to 8 uh, micromolar. Now, interestingly, they, looked at also, they also looked at quercetin on this list. And that's what we can see here, that the IC50 for quercetin was about 38 micromolar. So just when looking at luteolinidin and curomanin, those two flavonoids are about six times more effective at inhibiting CD38 than quercetin, and luteolin is about four to five times better. Now, another study looked at CD38 activity uh, uh, versus uh, the quercetin concentration, and we can see that from the half maximal concentration there that the IC54 quercetin's ability to inhibit CD38 in this study was about was significantly lower, about 13 micromolar. Nonetheless, uh, each of those three flavonoids, luteolinidin, curomanin, and luteolin, had IC50 values that were lower than 13 micromolar. So based on these two studies, a lower concentration of these three flavonoids would be needed when compared with quercetin to inhibit CD38. So what about apigenin? How do these flavonoids compare against apigenin uh, for their IC50 values to inhibit CD38? So uh, in this study, or, or in this data, we're looking at CD38 activity, again, on the y-axis, plotted against the apigenin concentration. And when looking at the IC50 value, uh, we can see that apigenin's IC50 for inhibiting CD38 in this data was about 12 micromolar. So again, uh, the three flavonoids on the list have lower levels, lower IC50 values for inhibiting C CD38 when compared with uh, apigenin's 12 micromolar in this study. So from this, we can conclude that luteolinidin, curomanin, and luteolin are better inhibitors of CD38 than apigenin and quercetin. So which foods contain these three different flavonoids? So I'm going to start with curomanin and luteolin because uh, the ability to get them through food may be uh, uh, more easily obtained uh, based on foods that are more uh, commercially available. Uh, so we'll see why that's the case in a second. So first, uh, curomanin. So it's most abundant in black elderberry black elderberries at uh, 700, about 740 milligrams per 100 grams of fresh weight. Uh, it, but it's also found in uh, lower amounts, but still relatively high amounts in blackberries, 140 milligrams of curamanin per 100 grams of fresh uh, blackberries. So uh, does curamanin, although it, it, it inhibits CD38, does that inhibition lead to higher levels of NAD. And as far as I can see, there, there's only one study that's looked at that. If anybody's uh, come across other studies, please leave a comment uh, below and, and uh, we can all share the knowledge. So uh, in this study, this is a, an, an, an in vitro study that they looked at cells. Uh, and on the y-axis is the intracellular NAD concentration. And uh, so starting at uh, uh, time zero, zero hours, they then induce these cells to differentiate. And we can see that the NAD levels declined after six hours uh, of differentiation. However, in the cells that were treated with curamanin, there was no decrease in NAD as shown there. And in fact, uh, you know, a small increase in NAD levels, likely because of curamanin's role as a CD38 inhibitor. 
Now, uh, luteolin is found in these foods here, so it's found most abundantly in dried Mexican oregano, about 11 milligrams of luteolin per gram. It's found in celery seeds, 7.6 milligrams of luteolin per gram, and then also in lower amounts in radicchio. Now, uh, although radicchio has you know, significantly lower amounts on a per gram basis, 0.38 milligrams per gram, one can eat you know, more of that uh, to get the similar amounts that are found in celery seeds or dried Mexican oregano. So if you eat 20 grams of radicchio, which isn't much, you get to uh, 7.6 milligrams per gram, the amount that's found in celery seeds. And if you eat about an ounce of radicchio, you get to the amounts that are found in one gram of uh, dried Mexican oregano. Now, uh, does luteolin impact levels of, it, of NAD? And there are no studies uh, that have yet explored that. Uh, if there are, please, again, leave a comment and let's share that knowledge. But I did a pretty extensive search and I didn't find any studies for that. Now, uh, last but not least, luteolinidin is found in black sorghum. And in this study, they looked at uh, uh, eight different varieties of black sorghum, which is a grain. And they found that the uh, average uh, luteolinidin concentration was 167 micrograms per gram. Now, uh, red sorghum is also uh, sold. And uh, it's important to note that it has uh, significantly lower amounts of luteolinidin. And in some cases, some varieties don't have any luteolinidin. So if your goal is to get luteolinidin into your diet and you're going to use red sorghum to do that, you may be buying a, a variety that doesn't have any luteolinidin in it. And I should also mention that luteolinidin is relatively hard to find, or sorry, black sorghum is relatively hard to find, at least online. Uh, I can only find one store that sold it, and uh, it was sold out when I, when I you know, uh, looked into buying some. So uh, does luteolinidin impact levels of NAD? So uh, that's what we're going to look at here. Uh, so we, we, we've got levels of NAD or NADH on the y-axis against three different experimental conditions. The controls, and I should mention this is in rat heart. Uh, so, so controls, rat hearts that were uh, exposed to ischemia plus reperfusion, IR, I slash R, and then ischemia plus reperfusion in the presence of luteolinidin. So first, when starting uh, at the control condition for NAD, which are the black bars, we can see that rat hearts exposed to ischemia plus reperfusion had a significant decline of NAD, uh, you know, up to more, uh, about 50% or a little bit more. However, rat hearts that were exposed to ischemia plus reperfusion, but also supplemented in the media with luteolinidin, uh, had increased NAD when compared to just uh, ischemia reperfusion in the absence of luteolinidin. So from this, we can conclude that NAD levels are increased after exposure to luteolinidin. Now, the big question is, how much of these foods should we eat to inhibit CD38 and maximize NAD in people? Now, that's unknown. There are no human RCTs that have explored these foods uh, to be able to uh, impact NAD levels in people. And it also depends on many factors, including absorption. You know, we can calculate based on the amounts of these flavonoids that can inhibit CD38 uh, to uh, come up with a, a, a predicted amount of food that could get you enough to be able to maximally inhibit CD38. But then again, absorption, uh, whether or not all of these flavonoids would be absorbed um, and how much of it would be absorbed will likely uh, vary depending on uh, uh, the individual. So, uh, but I'd argue that a strategy that contains foods uh, and maybe a variety of these foods that contain CD38 inhibitors may be an important strategy for attenuating the age-related decline for NAD. So in other words, it doesn't have to be just dried parsley, parsley, chamomile, and, you know, onions and dill, apigenin and quercetin. Based on these studies, there are other uh, 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 foods that contain CD38 inhibitors that may be able to help us uh, increase our NAD levels uh, uh, or at least fight the age-related decline for NAD levels. All right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.